addiction? Well, I don't want to say addiction because it's such a strong word. I have an obsession with vintage Hewlett Packard testing gear. It started with a 3458A, an eight and a half digit multimeter that is very linear and drifts very little over time. But then I had to have his friend, the 3245A, a universal source that is also very accurate. And then I needed a matching power supply that can be programmed. And then I needed a matching electronic load to fill up the void in the cabinet. And the reason for all this is to verify the functionality of every core board and to calibrate the combined thermistor thermocouple inputs. This video is number six in an unlimited series documenting various aspects of Recore, which is a 3D printer control board that runs Linux. To aid with the verification, I put together a testing jig that every Recore fits into and I've written a test script for it that measures as much as possible of the board. In order to get accurate measurements of the 23 voltage domains on the board, I've designed a multiplex board consisting of 20 bistable relays. Since there's no power applied to the relays once they have switched, the board itself does not produce a lot of electromagnetic noise to interfere with measurements. Clever use of NMOS transistors along with I2C based GPIO expanders gives it a very simple interface. The multiplexer board stacks on top of the bed of nails, which is a low cost PCB to tie together the board with the rest of the jig. One thing that I think is a bit novel about this setup is the fact that the board itself is used to control the tests. It might seem counterintuitive at first, but it actually makes a lot of sense in this case. If there's no software on the EMC, the bootloader will try to boot from USB. There, it will find a Debian image that has all the software needed to run the tests. The test script will then run through the tests, testing all heaters, steppers, end stops, fans, USB, HDMI, and Ethernet, plus measure and record over 20 voltage levels. All of this is gathered in a JSON document, which is uploaded to Git and also saved on the EMFC during flashing. The electronic load is used to check that the current measurements are in spec by drawing a constant one amp and checking that the same value is measured on the board. The final stage in the testing script is a calibration step. This is where the high-end equipment shines. Since the temperature inputs are dual purpose, you can connect either a thermistor or a thermocouple there. There are four instrumentation amplifiers on the input. If a thermistor is used, a one-time gain is applied. But if a thermocouple is used, 101 times gain is applied. Now, here's the rub. The gain is dependent on the resistors used. These resistors have a tolerance of 1%, which is fine, but good thermocouples can have a one degree accuracy across the temperature range. Let's say you have a one degree tolerance thermocouple, a type S class one, according to IEC 584. In the worst case scenario, both resistors used in the amplifier are in spec, but at their extremes. So the amplification becomes 103 instead of 101. Then at 400 degrees, you'd measure 408 degrees Celsius. Plus you need a voltage offset to allow for negative temperatures. The programmability is done by a GPIO pin, which is not ideal. And there are other components that add to the uncertainty. And this is not accounting for temperature drift and aging. Anyways, many of the initial uncertainties can be reduced by calibration. And since I have an expensive voltmeter that I trust, this is what I'm doing. I set up a voltage on the input and measure the output. And I do that for a range of input values, which with a bit of linear regression gives the gain an offset. After having done the purchase, I realized I could do a direct measurement of the input voltage, which then eliminates the voltage accuracy of the equipment and instead only relies on the linearity. But by then it was too late. I set up an experiment comparing the temperature from this Unity device that I don't trust with my Siglent multimeter with a random thermocouple connected and compare that with my homemade Type K thermocouple connected to the board. The results were inconclusive and only matched at certain times, probably due to a fast change in temperature. I think this requires a better experiment. I'm going to do a follow up video on temperature measurements. So if you want to watch that video, you can keep pulling this page at regular intervals or you can set up an interrupt that also works. Bye.